Welcome back. The Bible says this, what say you? In Acts, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse, but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right, I'm reading from the King James Version, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than, to, uh, than unto God you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and have heard. My friends, uh, it is right for us to hearken unto God and to obey God rather than man. I'm talking about here the Rowan County uh, uh, Register of Deeds. I think her name is uh, uh, Kim Davies. And this powerful young lady, as you know, she spent at least five days in jail because uh, she refused to issue same-sex marriages. Here's the crux of it. Here's what Kim's problem was. I want to read it to you. Because each marriage license issued by the clerk's office bore her name and title, Miss Davis concluded that her religious beliefs meant that she uh, could not have her office issue license to same-sex couples, so she had the office to stop issuing them entirely. Now, I understand why she would not want her name affixed to a marriage that is an abomination. I don't care what the, key, uh, the Supreme Court says, there is a law that is superior to the law of man, and it is the law of the God of the Bible. Miss Davis felt that she had to follow her conscience. And I'm reading uh, an opinion piece written by uh, Ryan Anderson, uh, September the 7th, uh, 2015. This was in the New York Times. He says, Miss Davis felt she had to follow her conscience and whether or not we shared her Christian faith and its particular position about issuing civil marriage license is beside the point. That after all is what religious freedom and religious accommodations are all about. Creating the space for citizens to fulfill their duties as they understand them to God, regardless of what the rest of us think. Of course, religious freedom and accommodations aren't absolute. The federal anti-discrimination laws requires a reasonable accommodation uh, of religious belief where it does not place undue hardship on employers. And Kentucky, like many other states, provides additional protections against unnecessary government burdens on religion. But Kentucky already does this. So it was encumbered upon the government to try to work out a solution. Miss Davis wasn't trying to prevent same-sex couples from getting marriage license at all. She just didn't want her name or title on the paperwork. That's why she wouldn't allow her deputies to issue the license. Kentucky, listen to this, Kentucky accommodates conscience uh, for other license. Why not? marriage. Yet Governor Stephen L. Bichard uh, issued a mandate telling all county clerks to issue license to same-sex couples uh, without exception. When asked to call a special session of the legislature to try to work out a reasonable accommodation, he said it could wait until January. That's why Ms. Davis ended up in court. But it shouldn't have gotten to that point. This county clerk was being hailed as either a hero or a villain. The Kentucky legislature should have looked instead to North Carolina. Sensing the Supreme Court, and I'm going to finish this and I want you to follow me. Sensing the Supreme Court might redefine marriage, North Carolina legislature passed a law creating a system to accommodate as far as possible the conscious beliefs of magistrates who object to performing same-sex marriages and clerks who objected to issuing license. North Carolina law made it clear that no eligible couple could be denied a marriage license, but officials could recuse themselves should they have sincere objections by notifying a superior of their objections ahead of time. The clerks could protect their right of conscience while ensuring that no couple would be inconvenienced. Perhaps a similar solution could be found in Kentucky by removing an individual clerk's name and title from a marriage license. The state already amended license 
The state of Kentucky has already amended license. Look at this, uh, how they amended it. From bride and groom to party one and party two. Why not make a change for Kim Davis? It's no more bride and groom, but party one and party two. Now, no accommodation was made for Miss Davis, but on the other hand, uh, a recent ruling. Federal appeals court has ruled that an Ill illegal immigrant and convicted felon can't be deported back to Mexico because he identifies as a transgendered woman, which leaves him vulnerable to torture back in his home country. His home country, by the way, is Mexico, which actually has anti-discrimination laws, which protects homosexuals and, and lesbians and, and, and transgendered persons. But our government ruled that he cannot be deported. Now, this is a man, his name is Edwin uh, Carey Avando Hernandez. Edwin Carey Avando Hernandez was born a male in Mexico and claims to have been raped by his brothers and suffered other torments. In 2000, he illegally entered the U.S. and took up residence in Fresno, California. Anando, Avando Hernandez also started taking female hormones and began living openly as a woman in 2005. In 2006, he committed two separate drunk driving offenses. Uh, listen to this, the second of which uh, uh, injured two people. I wonder how would you have liked for your loved ones or yourself to be one of those two people who were injured and resulted in a felony conviction after serving a year in jail, he was deported uh, back to Mexico in 2007. Uh, back in Mexico, uh, Avando Hernandez claims to have been subject to more harassment from family members and neighbors and to have been raped by members of the Mexican army. He illegally entered the U.S. and again, uh, legal illegally entered the U.S. again, and after being arrested, petitioned for sanctuary in the U.S. under the U.N. Conventions Against Torture, the CAT, arguing that deporting him would violate the CAT because he would likely, more than likely, experience torture at the hand of Mexican authorities, even though no, there is no government-sponsored torture uh, taking place uh, in Mexico. There's no government-sponsored torture of, uh, of transgendered persons, of members of the LGBT uh, uh, community. And basically, when one country gives asylum to someone else for torture, it has to be official torture, government-sponsored uh, torture, not torture or a rape from a family member or from a loved one or from someone wearing a police uniform or anything else. It has to be a, a, a something that the government is sponsoring. But uh, in America now, even though Miss Davies uh, was, was put in jail for five days for her religious beliefs, uh, Hernando, uh, uh, Avando Hernandez was given preferential treatment. Uh, let me read this to you. An immigration judge and the Board of Immigration Appeals, the BIA, both rejected Avando Hernandez's arguments on grounds that he had committed a serious crime, the felony of driving drunk, drunk and was not likely to face official torture. Now, look at this. A three-judge panel on the Ninth Circuit of Appeals says Avando Hernandez must be allowed to stay in the U.S. because he more than likely will be tortured if returned to Mexico. Judge Jacqueline Wynn, uh, an Obama appointee, and her argument is the judges fail to recognize the difference between gender identity and uh, sexual uh, orientation, refusing to allow the use of female pronouns because she considered Avando Hernandez to be still male, even though Avando Hernandez dresses as a woman, takes female hormones, and uh, identified as a woman for over a decade. Well, it doesn't matter. 
So you mean to tell me if a man put on a dress and called himself a woman for 10 years, that makes him a woman? Come on, judge. You got to know better than that. Do you see what I mean by calling good evil and evil good? Do you see what Isaiah was saying in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20? Woe be unto them that do such a thing. Uh, this judge said that because this guy self-identifies as a woman, but he's a guy and he's a felon, and he's been caught driving drunk, and he was deported, and he re-entered the country illegally. He came in illegally the first time. He re-entered illegally, and now he gets uh, preferential treatment. All of this, this, this ruling took place while Kim Davies was in jail. What kind of America have we become? And by the way, Ed uh, Carey, Evando Hernandez, offered no proof. They just took his word for it. He said he was tortured, so I guess there you have it. He didn't have to prove it since he said it. That makes it so. And I guess, well, that follows their logic because now he says he's a woman. And uh, because he says that, it puts on a dress. That makes it so also. Do you see how idiotic and how wicked we have become? My friends, I, it is amazing to me what happens when you fail to believe God's truth. You'll believe anything that's put out there. Now, when the uh, person is elected to be the president of the United States, he must take the oath of office. I want to read to you the oath of office that is given to uh, every president. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. This is said with the hand on the Bible and the hand raised, a uh, hand on the Bible by the way, and, and, and I pray that they, they don't try to take the Bible out of that ceremony either. But I have in my hands as we close this segment, my friends, I have in my hand, at least 25 violations of law by President Obama and his administration. For those who argue that uh, Ms. Davis should have uh, obeyed the law and, and, and did her job and, 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 and issued those same-sex uh, marriage license or quit or go to jail, well, that I have at least 25 violations here of our president and his administration where they violated the law and no one got locked up. He's not in jail. Uh, no one in his administration went to jail. Uh, number one, the Obama administration uses IRS to target conser conservatives, Christians, and pro-Israel organizations and donors and citizens. Another violation, an unprecedented attack on the First Amendment. The Obama Justice Department ordered criminal investigations of Fox News reporters for doing their job during the 2012 uh, election year. President Obama, uh, throughout his presidency, has refused to enforce long-established U.S. immigration laws. For example, 300,000 captured illegal aliens had been processed and were awaiting deportation. But, incredibly, Obama stopped these deportations and ordered the U.S. Border Patrol to release many of these illegal aliens in violation of the law, and he gave no explanation. He just said, do it. Um, and there are many other examples. Fourth, uh, uh, President Obama refused to build a double barrier security fence along the U.S.-Mexican border uh, in direct violation of the 2006 uh, Security Fence Act. This was a law. The law required that, uh, quote, at least two layers of reinforced fencing, end of, end of quote, be built along America's 650-mile uh, border with Mexico. So far, just 40 miles of the fence have been built, most of this during the Bush administration. Well, this is the law that's been uh, ignored. Number five, President Obama unconstitutionally assaulted uh, his unconstitutional assault on the Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms. Uh, President Obama issued in one day, 21 separate executive orders that attack, the, uh, attack and undermine your Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms. And you want to keep the Second Amendment in place, my friends, because, believe it or not, our first line of defense uh, to protect us is not the police. Your first line of defense to protect yourself, it, believe it or not, is you.
It's you yourself. By the time the police arrive, a whole lot of damage has been done. And, and we are, are given the, the right to bear arms and, and, and to have a well-armed militia to also protect us from our government should the government get crazy. Uh, number six, uh, the, the, the assault on, Christian, on Christians and religious freedoms. And my friends, they go on and on and on. My time is swiftly coming to an end, but no one has gone to jail. Uh, the, the, mischaracteri uh, the mischaracterization of what uh, Obamacare would cost. At first, it was supposed to cost $1 trillion the people were promised. That went from $1 trillion to $2.4. Now it's $10 trillion. Oh my, we can't afford that. We can't afford that. And how things were done to get it passed into law. How the law was broken during the operation of Fast and Furious. And no one got went to jail, even though one of our Border Patrol agents, Brian Terry, was killed. So forth and so on. And yet, no one has gone to jail. When the uh, uh, Defense of Marriage Act was voted into law in 1996, assigned by President Bill Clinton, our president arbitrarily decided that he would no longer enforce that law and that the chief law enforcement uh, officer, the Attorney General, Eric Holder, was not to enforce that law, even though it was law. Now, you say that Miss Davis, if she don't want to, Davis, if she don't want to uh, uh, obey the law, that she should quit her job. She should resign. Uh, she went to jail. She was found in contempt of court. She did five days uh, in jail. Uh, and this is just a, a Rowan County uh, magistrate. And yet we see examples of lawlessness from the highest office in the land. My friends, these things ought not to be. And there are so many others. Uh, 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 even when uh, Osama bin Laden was killed and while we were eager to use the killing of Osama bin Laden, bin Laden for political gain, Obama exposed the identity and the methods of operations of operations of the U.S. Navy team that conducted the operation in Pakistan, thus exposing its members to a lifetime of risk before they had been targeted. Uh, a lifetime of risk uh, they have been targeted for assassination by Islamists. A short time after Obama exposed the Navy SEALs method of operation, 20 Two seals were shot down and killed in Afghanistan, and nobody is going to jail. What is my point? My, my friends, listen, there is something wrong. We're going in the wrong direction. And America is not in trouble with me. America is not in trouble with the black church. America is not in trouble with any human being. America is in trouble with God, for it was the God of the Bible who said, Woe be unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. My friends, this is what the Bible says. What say you? Thanks for watching.